Hey everybody, Movie Review Next Door here, and I am back with another movie review for tonight. Was a bit uh stressed earlier. Try to get it out talking about this movie. Um, I wasn't stressed by the movie, just oh, dealing with a scammer. But um, tonight the second movie I watched was Skin Traffic or A Hitman in London. And I will, uh, bleh, whatever. Uh, this film is from 2015, directed by Ara Payaya. Paya uh, and it stars. Let me just go to the poster. Gary Daniels, Mickey Rourke, Eric Roberts, Daryl Hannah, Michael Madsen, Dominic Swain, Alan Ford, and Jeff Fahey. Now, in this film, after his last assignment ended with the death of an innocent woman, woman, uh, excuse me, a hitman's new job in London is compromised when he is overcome with guilt and ends up helping a desperate woman who is caught up in a human trafficking operation. Now, what did I think of a hitman in London or skin traffic? Well, here's the main issue. This does not look like a film that costs what it did. This film apparently cost a $20 million. That's what it says online. It looks like it cost around a million at the most. A lot of the effects look like shit. A lot of the sound effects are really not that good at all. But for some reason, I just enjoyed this film simply because of Gary Daniels. Um, the action scenes were pretty actually and um music wasn't half bad but yeah uh, let me get to the cast gary gary daniels as bradley hitman he does a great job acting here he actually really does um <laughs> excuse me he's he's got this nice like demeanor to him that makes him come off really friendly, but also serious when he needs to be. And I I really have always liked Gary Daniels. I liked Deadly Target. I loved Recoil. Um, I've probably seen him in something else, but I can't think of it right now. But I do like him as a martial artist and as an actor. Mickey Rourke as Vogel. He's in about two scenes of this film. He's okay. Um, Eric Roberts is the main villain, the execute executive. He's good. He's always good. He's one of those actors that has been in... He, he is one of the most prolific actors of all time. He's been in over 750 things, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, he has this level of like class and this level of like... Just something about him really works whenever you see him in a film, to me at least. But he's a good villain here. Um, Daryl Hannah as Jana. She's like the leader, like one of the owners of like a bar that's part of this human trafficking thing she's she's good she isn't she's not in it like a ton like everybody else uh, michael madsen as the boss he's another part of this whole thing he's fine dominic swain is anna po anna peel she's one of the she's the girl in the human trafficking operation she's fine too alan ford uh as Paul Hamilton, who was Anna Peel's handler, he does his normal, like, British, like, yelling and, like, what you talking about? He he does his normal thing that he does. He's fine. And Jeff Fahey is fine. Here's the thing about this film. I don't know where all the money went <laughs> making it. Um, it. Again, it apparently costed $20 million to make. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that number has been sweetened. My guess is that a lot of the money went to the actors, and a, maybe a lot of the crew didn't get, get paid that much, but this film does not look nearly like it cost $20 million, and if that cast is the reason, I can kind of understand it, because there's a lot of big names in this film, like from back in the 80s and 90s. Because, like, again... Mickey Rourke, huge actor in the 80s and 90s. 
Eric Roberts, again, huge actor, 70s, 80s, 90s. Everybody knows who Eric Roberts is. Daryl Hannah, Michael Madsen. Dominic Swain was in, like, one of those, like, OC-type shows. Alan Ford, big British actor. And Jeff Fahey from, like, Lawnmower Man and all these other films. Like, that's such an insane cast. And part of why I'm not as in love with this movie as I think I would be otherwise is because a lot of the cast is wasted. I don't mean that in that they're just they're collecting a paycheck, but I do wish that so many of them were in the film more. Like, Eric Roberts has enough scenes to show that he is a villain, but I wanted more interactions between him and him and uh, Gary Daniels. Because I do like Gary Daniels as an actor, I really do. And maybe later I'll, like, post a, like, I'll, like, upload, like, a short of, like, one of the fight scenes of this film. But that's the main thing you're here for. It's an action movie. It stars a martial artist. You're here for the martial arts scenes. And the martial arts scenes are pretty, are, I'd say, very well done. There are some with some not-so-good blood splatter effects or not-so-good, like, not so amazing editing but even then it's not like unwatchable at all it's like very it's very watchable action and there are times where it's like really brutal too which is nice and i just wish that the rest of the film looked as good as the action scenes because there are times where it feels like an entirely different director takes over and the only director listed is out of payaya and I don't know, just something seems off with this. I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, I don't know. It's just... It's... Sorry. Just something seems off with this. It, it it The fact that it cost a $20 million, this should look a lot better than it does. For example, I'm pretty sure the first John Wick cost it around that. Let me look it up. And the first John Wick has a pretty great cast, too. Twenty to thirty million. So this apparently costed like around the same as the first John Wick. And while I don't love the first John Wick like so many others do, I'd say the third one is the best one that I've seen so far. I think that it at least uses its budget well. The film looks very professional. The fight scenes are well handled, very well edited. You can actually see what's going on. The CGI blood isn't that bad, um, for the most part. But with this film, a lot of it... I don't know if it's laziness or that it was rushed, but this film... It's This kind of feels like a film that would come out during the pandemic. And what I mean by that is there's certain scenes with actors like this starry cast. Not I'm not specifically talking about Gary Daniels. I'm talking about all the other basically guest appearances that happen. Where there's like one scene between Michael Madsen's character and Eric Roberts' character. Where Michael Madsen is clearly... It's clearly supposed to be them conversing. But it doesn't feel like either of them are in the same room. And it kind of reminded me of The Expendables. And how in The Expendables, like, it would cut to Mickey Rourke being the only one in the frame. And then Jason Statham. And then Sylvester Stallone. And it didn't feel like any of them were filming at the same time. And I, I feel like that's what's happening here. These actors got, like, an amount of money. They probably filmed a couple days apiece. Kind of like those Bruce Willis films. Those, like, direct-to-video Bruce Willis films from, like, the past decade. Um, and, yeah, it, it is disappointing because if this cast was, like, in the film, like, for the entirety of it... Like, Alan Ford is literally in one scene. Uh, Freaking Jeff Fahey is in a couple. Dominic Swain is actually in a decent amount. Michael Madsen's in a couple, Daryl Han is in a couple, Eric Roberts is in a couple, and Mickey Rourke is in two. Like, most of this cast is barely in the film. If they were, and giving, like, really good performances, this could be, like, an all-timer. 
Because this cast is insane. It is. And it should have been so much better. But, like, the thing... Again, I can't... I have to give films credit where it is due. And, again, the fight scenes are well done. They're well filmed. They're well handled. They're well choreographed. And I don't know who did the choreography. But whoever it is, like... Godspeed, you did a great job. Um, and yeah, you made the fight scenes very entertaining. They really were. Some of them were hard to watch. Sometimes, uh, some of them, like, felt very raw, very brutal. And that's what I like to see in a film like this. That's going to be very heavy on the martial arts. I hate it when people fake martial arts in movies, because it always looks stupid to me. And and that leads into another one of my points. I like I said before, there are parts of this film that have like a bit of a filter on them, like a bit of a green filter on them, and then parts that don't. Uh, at the finale, there's like a bit where the two, the main character and Eric Roberts's character, they get into a bit of a gunfight, and then it switches to the green filter as if another director is directing, and. I don't know if this is just, like, reshoots, like, they had to reshoot scenes. I'd love to know what the reasoning for this is. I don't remember this happening in the director's other film, Instant Death, but may maybe I just, I don't know, maybe I just didn't realize it, but it just, I don't know, just something seems off, off about it. Because certain scenes, def certain scenes are like well shot, like normal dialogue scenes. There's certain ones that are well shot, certain ones that aren't, and I don't know what to make of it. Because I don't know anything about the behind the scenes of this film. Apparent, I don't even know if the Blu-ray has like a making of, and if it does, I doubt that all of the actors are on it. Alan Ford probably was in there, f like filming for like, I don't know, half a day, like. He's only in it for a scene, so I'd assume so. But, like, yeah, it, it, it does annoy me that this film isn't better. Because this concept of, like, bringing all of these, like, big actors from back in the day back together should have been, like, an Expendables type thing. Or, like, Triple Threat, which I do like Triple Threat. And I I don't know what happened. I, I don't know why the film doesn't look better. Maybe it's because Ara Payaya is just not a good director. I don't know much about him other than the two films I've seen from him, this and Instant Death with Lou Ferrigno. But yeah, I don't I don't know what to, I I don't know. I just simply don't know. But what I will say is this film does have its pros for sure. The again, the fight scenes are very well done for the most part. Um Gary Daniels is a great leading man. I do think that he should have been given a bigger chance in Hollywood. Um, Freaking the score. The score from Sefi Carmel was pretty decent. He also worked on Instant Death. And he had something to do with sound on Legacy of Lies, which is a good um, Scott Atkins film. And uh, Human Centipede, which I don't remember much about. But yeah, like the soundtrack was pretty decent for the most part. Some tracks were really good. Some tracks were really bad. It's one of those where it's a big mixed bag. Uh. Oh. And again, the film moves at a good pace. It it never really got boring. And an, another th quick thing about the film's um, editing, there are certain scenes that'll just kind of cut and go into some completely different location. There's like a car chase that happens with Gary Daniels and Dominic Swain's character in the car. And like a car flips over, one explodes, really bad CGI fire. And the other one like, flips out just normal flips over and then it cuts to them in a cafe and it's like I, you can tell I, if 
the choreography in this film was done by Ara Payaya, I my big recommendation to him would be work as a fight choreographer or work as a second unit action director because the action scenes are for the most part well filmed. Maybe some of them hold back on the edits a bit, but like work as that, not as a main director, because a lot of the a lot of the dialogue scenes just do not look great. They look very cheap, and yeah, that's what I would uh, say. But yeah, I I don't really have much to, else to say about this film. If any of this sounds interesting to you, um, I guess watch it on Tubi. I'll link it. But yeah, um, sorry I'm coughing so much. Um, you get to the pros and cons. Pros again: Gary Daniels, great leading performance and great at the fighting. The score is not bad. Um, the fight scenes are pretty well done for the most part. Um, the way that this film handles the subject of human trafficking was actually pretty well done. It They didn't feel the need to show a bunch of needless nudity. Which, I mean, I don't have an issue with a human trafficking movie showing a bit of nudity. It's just that there has to be the right context and the right usage of it but this film doesn't it for the most part insinuates things and i tend to like that more when it's tackling a subject like this though there are people online that'll find their own meanings to simulated sex anyway but whatever um cons again sound effects work was really bad for on a lot of the fight scenes um the cgi fire and some of the cgi blood was all right but some of it didn't look that great um, mostly the, like, blood stains on the walls or on the floors looked fine, but the blood puffs didn't look the greatest. Um, again, some of the editing is choppy, especially between scenes. There's not a lot of cohesion between scenes. Um, and yeah, I wish the all-star cast was in the film more and given more of things to do, but yeah. That was my review of Skin Traffic or A Hitman in London. Let me know in the comments if you've seen the film before. Or just comment down below Let me know what y'all want me to watch. And uh, movie of your next door.